must move twice as far. Three times for three, and so on. The purpose is to establish the shape of the working surface for this particular problem. The principle becomes clear when we add a representation of a follower and a scale. Four on the shaft, four on the follower. The same with all other values, not only for whole numbers, but for all values in between. With an outside shape as the working surface, the capacity of such a cam is limited to one revolution. Additional revolutions can be obtained by extending the working surface, which now must be a groove. An example is the constant lead cam, where the follower is a pin riding in the groove. In a fire control computer, a rotary input of ship's speed is delivered as linear of the follower. In the reciprocal cam, the output is equal to one divided by the input. The working surface is constructed by plotting points on radii. This distance on line one represents one. Half this distance on line two represents the reciprocal of or one half, one third on three, and so on. With this curve cut as a groove in a disk cam and a follower added, the cam output will be the reciprocal of any input. Let's watch it. Disk cams generally have a non-computing runout at both ends of the plotted curve. This is a square cam, so-called because it delivers the square of an input, which may be either plus or minus. The tangent cam is an example of a trigonometric cam. In this cam, the input can be any angle between 40 and 70 degrees. the output, the tangent of the angle. This time of flight cam is an example of a flat ballistic cam. The working surface is the outside contour of this part. The input is range. The output, time of flight. This is a sector type follower held in contact with the cam by a spring. You can see how the cam turns the output gear. A barrel cam, also called a three-dimensional cam, computes from two different inputs and delivers one output. The barrel shape is the working surface. This is the follower. The example shown here computes super elevation. Briefly, the problem is this. Gun elevation is the sum of super elevation and advance elevation of the target. Super elevation increases as advance range increases, but not in direct proportion. Super elevation decreases 
as advance elevation increases. Again, not in direct proportion. Thus, superelevation is determined by advance range and advance elevation, both of which are the inputs to this cam. The output is superelevation. The mechanism can be understood if you first consider the superelevation problem at one elevation only. There can be any number of ranges, and each range requires a different superelevation. In a cam cut for one elevation only, an input would position the cam for advance range, and the working surface would produce the corresponding superelevation output. But this cam is for one elevation only. To handle all elevations, the barrel contains an infinite number of such cams. A cross section at any point is a cam for a particular advance elevation. The required section is selected by the elevation input. The range